Hello everyone, I'm Louis Bernetti, and today we're going to be discussing movement challenges that might be present following a stroke so that we have a better understanding as care partners or survivors of strokes ourselves on how to navigate these and potential tips and tricks to help as we work through these. So as normal, I'm going to share my screen as we discuss the content. And so starting off, I have down here that we're going to be discussing potential impacts of movement on following a stroke. So we're going to start off with understanding the two different types that we're going to be discussing today, which is going to be apraxia and ataxia. And so for apraxia, it is the difficulty in performing skilled and purposeful movement. Now, this is typically due to a lesion in the left hemisphere of the brain, and there are two different types of apraxia. This includes ideational and idiomotor apraxia. Ideational results in no idea or concept of what to do. An idiomotor is when we are unable to complete a task or a movement upon a verbal command. So with ideational apraxia, the best way that I can remember this and help others remember it is to think about the word itself. Ideational, the word idea is in it. And this connects back with no idea or concept of what to do. So the individual doesn't even have the beginnings of the idea of how to complete an activity. So an example of this would be that you hand somebody who has ideational apraxia a toothbrush and you just hand it to them. And typically if we were handed a toothbrush, we would know that it's used to brush our teeth. If somebody has ideational apraxia, they're gonna probably look at it and then have no idea what to do with it and maybe just start brushing their hair, maybe rubbing it with their, on their face because they don't have any idea or concept of what to do or how to start with it. So that's what ideational apraxia looks like. It's not even knowing where to begin. And so I'm looking over here at my notes, making sure I'm not missing anything. And it's just, it says here, the inappropriate use of a tool or object. Um, and then primarily it's difficulty with multi-step tasks. So you could see if you have a hard time understanding where to start an activity or even what to do with things that adding on extra activities or steps to it is only gonna make the water muddier and more challenging. So that's what ideational apraxia looks like. Idiomotor apraxia is when we're unable to complete a task or movement upon a verbal command. So the way this would look like as if you are walking by and you know somebody in the room next to you has idiomotor apraxia and you see them brushing their hair. You come back 20 minutes later and you ask the individual, you know, you hand them their hairbrush and you say, oh, you know, you missed a spot over here. Um, you wanna brush that out? And they look at the hairbrush and they know what they were asked to do and they know what they should do. They just should bring it up and brush their hair, but they can't do it. After a verbal command, they aren't able to do it. And that's because when you have idiomotor apraxia, our kinetic memory is impacted. And what kinetic memory is, is that memory of movements or activities that we do that we take, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis that we don't really think of. So like, you know, when you wake up and we know to put our head through our shirt and put our arms through the sleeves, that is a kinetic memory. We know when we see a shirt, that's how you put a shirt on. That's just how we grew up. We learned it that way. When you have idiomotor apraxia, you're unable to access that memory on command. So you may be doing it subconsciously because you're not actively thinking about doing it, but it's when you're asked to retrieve that information and do it yourself and when you can't do it. And so here I have that it is um, individuals maybe brushing their hair, as we discussed earlier, walk in the room, ask them to do it again, they can't do it. They might have a hard time copying gestures or mimicking gestures. So if you're saying, you know, follow my movements and you're going up and down or, you know, follow how I brush my hair and you're showing them how you brush your hair, they still wouldn't be able to copy that because they can't access that memory. And then challenges with opening jars, holding coins and adjusting um, keys or their grip on items also might be a challenge. So here are some tips to help with ataxia and the different types. So if you have ideational ataxia, which is again, the one of not knowing where to start with an activity, um, the best way to do it is to first simplify the task. So make the task far more simple than it already is. If it is, you know, if you feel like the task is already simple, break it down even more. Because that would be a challenging thing. And that is something that should be simplified as they begin to work up back to it. Um, and then backward chaining. So what backward chaining is, is that let's say 
you're wanting them to um, put their shirt on. So a way to backward chain it would be that you put their arm, you help them get their arm through one sleeve and then you help them get their arm through the other sleeve. And then you hold up the shirt. So the head of the shirt is right in front of them. And you say, okay, now it's your turn. Can you put your head through here? And then you let them do that final step. And so they put the head on through and then they put their shirt on. And so it gives a sense of accomplishment, but it also helps me build that memory of, okay, so now that I have my arms through, that's when I put my head through, you know, this is what I do with this. And it's doing that with everything. So with brushing your hair, it could be you hand in the brush, you help them bring it up to their head and you brush down the left side halfway. And now you're like, okay, now you finish. And they brush the rest of the way. And then they're like, oh, okay. So I grab the brush, I bring it up, I brush it down. So you're kind of doing most of the activity except for the final step and letting them complete that final step until they can kind of work backwards and take on the next step and the next step and the next step. For idiomotor tips and tricks, which is the one of having a hard time accessing that memory to do things when you're asked to do them, adaptive equipment is a very good way to help with this. Um, and then again, help them relearn gestures or help them relearn what we call ADLs, activities of daily living. So just kind of do ADL practice, practice what you're supposed to do when you get a pan. So here's what I, you do, here's a pan and you generalize it to all the pans. You put food in this, you put it on the stove, you, you cook with a pan, you know, or water bottles, you know, you fill it up with water. And then once you have filled up with water, you bring it to your mouth, you take a drink and helping them relearn all of these activities it's kind of step-by-step, step, it's kind of like a training regimen. And another way to help is have them work with an occupational therapist. Occupational therapists for both of these types of ataxia um, are trained to work with this. And so ask for a reference from your physician or referral for an occupational therapist and see what kind of tips, tricks, and um, help they can provide as well. And so now we're gonna be going on to ataxia. And so ataxia differs from apraxia because apraxia is a person's inability to complete or carry out familiar and purposeful movements, right? Where ataxia, individuals can carry out and know the purposeful movements, they just have very little coordination. So apraxia is that they're having a hard time completing the movement because they're just having a hard time with a, accessing a purposeful movement upon command or remembering what to do, but they're still moving smoothly. Ataxia is they're having no issue remembering what to do or how to do it. It's that, that they have a lack of coordination so that they might not be as smooth with the movements. So where apraxia is smooth movements, they're just having a hard time remembering or what to do. Ataxia is the opposite in that it's more kind of broken movement as opposed to having a challenge remembering. So ataxia is impaired balance and coordination. Um, loss of muscle control in the legs and arms. It can also impact our fingers, our hands, our speech can be impacted, mouth, and even our eye movements. So these are all areas that can be um, ataxic. And then there are two types of ataxia. Um, primarily, there are other types of ataxia, but these are the ones that are most commonly seen. That includes vestibular ataxia, which is leaning, falling, head tilting towards one side, uh, typically of the lesion. So it's a lot of like kind of not feeling very secure or stable in movement, up and moving. You feel very kind of off balance a lot of the time. And then cerebellar ataxia, which is the inability to control the rate and range of stepping movements. So you're really having a hard time, you know, keeping a normal rhythmic gait, having a hard time like stepping, you know, smoothly and keeping kind of like a smooth pace in a walk. So what are some strategies for ataxia? So Adaptive devices are wonderful for ataxia, using a walking stick or a cane to kind of help supplement that difficulty with movement. Um, weighted or modified utensils. So if you have uncoordinated movements or you're having a hard time moving stuff, adding extra weight so it's not kind of, you know, moving around too much on you to kind of help stabilize is also a great way when eating. And then communication aids, if you're having a challenge with speech, um, you're having a hard time coordinating your mouth and your tongue to kind of produce the word that you're wanting to produce. Um, using communicative aids is very helpful. And then also just seeking out um, therapies, seeking out physical therapy to help with coordinating your movements, occupational therapists to help with those daily activities, those adaptations every day that you might need. 
And then speech to improve communication and swallowing are also beneficial therapies to use when experiencing ataxia. And so that ends it for our movement discussion. And I will look forward to seeing you guys next time as we discuss more. So see you guys next time.